outer space. Limitless and timeless. Filled with cosmic explosions and endless turbulence. An infinite playground for that occasional blazing visitor, the comet. At first, comets terrified man. He thought they were signals of impending catastrophe. But he got used to them, and he gave names to them, and waited for them to drop by like old friends. This one has come from behind the sun, moving across the heavens at 108,000 miles an hour, and has never before been seen by man. asteroid belt, a vast junkyard of metal and rock orbiting the sun between Jupiter and Mars. Thousands of fragments, some as small as a fist, some as large as a city. And amongst these, Orpheus, 20 miles in diameter and undisturbed for countless generations, until now. Mr. Sherwood told me was to get you off that boat and start you on your way to Houston. There's a special jet laid on for you. You really would have cut across my bows? Yes, sir. Then I would have rammed you. And gone straight to the bottom, sir. It's good to see you again. Good to see you again. You owe me ten dollars. I do? I got my handicap down to twelve. No wonder it's good to see me again. Yes? Dr. Bradley's here. Good. Send him in. It's yours. Mr. Sherwood. Good to see you. Come in, come in. Sorry to do this to you. Not at all. Yes, I did that. I called Helen and I asked her to send some of your clothes. Hello, Mr. Sherwood's office. I, uh... Oh, I'm sorry he's in a meeting. I can't be of service. Would you care to leave a message? 
I didn't know that you and she were... You've met General Easton. Uh, once, Washington. Hi, General. Good of you to come. Sam Mason, our cap commander. Hello. Peter Watson, our flight director. Why don't you put that down and let me fix you a small scotch? A large one. Good. We could all use one, I think. Why don't we sit around the table? Take your coat off. How big is your boat? 52 feet. An awful lot's been happening here, Paul. And none of it good. Harry, I left NASA five years ago. Why am I back? Let me tell you. Gentlemen, help yourselves. Seven days ago, Palomar Observatory reported the discovery of a new comet, General. Now, there's nothing unusual in that. They spot at least nine or ten every year, either themselves or other observatories. But it's where this one seemed to be going. The asteroid belt. Go on. When they called me, it was a couple of hundred thousand miles from the belt, give or take a few. Challenger 2, our space probe to Mars, was in the vicinity. General Easton's son, Tom, was commanding. We got in touch with him. And then we... I changed their program. That was last Friday. to break the monotony. What do you call slight? Two days, four hours, and 32 minutes. What happens to our schedule? Don't concern yourself about that, Tom. We'll take care of everything from here. But your lunch with Mars will have to wait. Whatever you say. Where are we going? The asteroid belt. That's affirmative. What for? There's a comet about to go through it. Go through there all the time. It's a first for this one. We figure it was wrenched out of orbit by Jupiter's gravitational pull. How big is this comet? 480 kilometers in diameter, which makes its nucleus large enough to do some real damage if it hits anything. I said it's straight toward Orpheus. That's the big one in the center. Where do you want us to park? Park yourselves alongside Vesta, about 25,000 kilometers this side. You'll be there three hours before the comet shows. We want all the information you can give us on its size and orbital elements. Take a few pictures? A lot of pictures. We've already started things going down here. So you'll be changing course in about five minutes. Is my old man with you? He's here. Tell him hello. Will do. As I said before, that was last Friday. Yesterday, Sunday morning at 1100 hours, they started to pull up alongside Vespa. <laughs> Got it? Yes, we've got it. Can you zoom in on Orpheus for us? Can do. Beautiful. All right, let's have some information. We'll take some measurements. For the next hour and a half, they read the belt for us. And then what we're waiting for finally appeared. from there. 
It's coming apart in a million pieces! I don't think I can ever forgive myself. I should have figured that it was... No be... guilt, Harry. We'd all have given the same orders. Who knows about this? Nobody at the moment. But we're going to have to put out a release right after this meeting. Why am I here? There's a chunk of Orpheus heading towards Earth, a pretty big one. There are a lot of little pieces coming along with it and in front of it. But it's the big one we're worried about. The figures haven't been worked out yet, but six days from now, we could be hit. We have to be prepared to That is precisely to why we put Hercules up there. Will you let there? me finish? I've convened a meeting at NASA headquarters in Washington for tomorrow morning. Lucas, Steinberg, Fillmore, some of the others that you know will be there. I want you to come to that meeting. Come to your meeting. We appreciate it, Paul. Thanks. I've delayed a commercial flight. You're leaving in one hour. Up to date material on Hercules. Something for you to read on the plane. You'll be met at the other end. Your hotel room has been booked. And Gladys out there has your expense arrangements. Why don't you stick a room up my ass? I could sweep the carpet on the way out. Haven't changed, have you? Samuelson back into harbor. Among the other nine who failed to finish was Dr. Peterson's Maverick from Seattle, who was disqualified for crossing the line prior to start. John Slavin's Mary B. collided with Arnold Parker's Swan. Both boats suffered sufficient damage to withdraw. The big surprise of the day was Paul Bradley's Blythe Spirit, which withdrew for no apparent reason early in the race. John Dunning had a running battle with Bruce County. I know it's late. I just wanted to... Paul, where are you? Why aren't you on the boat? Uh, Washington. How are the kids? Oh, Jimmy's got a cold, and uh, Julie's bound to get it, and we're still fighting about homework. Apart from that, they're fine. What are you doing in Washington? Well, I'm not sure yet. I was just phoning to let you know where I am, and... How are you? Oh, I bet you know. Paul? Tell the kids I love them. a chunk of Orpheus heading towards Earth, a pretty big one. There are a lot of little pieces coming along with it and in front of it, but it's the big one we're worried about. The figures haven't been worked out yet, but six days from now, we could be hit. <laughs>
Sorry I'm late. You and everybody else. Let me tell you about that, Paul. Either we're in the wrong room, or there's a lot of brain power lost somewhere in Washington. Nobody else is coming. Lucas, Fillmore, Steinberg? I didn't ask them. Why not? You know damn well why not. Because we don't need them. You. You originated Hercules. Well, I've cut it out, Paul. I know how you feel. But dredging up old feelings... I don't have to time... dredge up nothing. I can taste it right now. Now, look. It wasn't my decision to turn Hercules into... Turn Hercules into what? What did they turn it into? Will you listen to me? Hercules was never designed to be a nuclear weapon with 14 warheads pointing right down on Russia. Not only Russia. Or China, whatever the hell else. Those rockets were supposed to point outwards, not in. It was meant to defend us against the same goddamn threat that we're facing now. Wait a minute now. Didn't I yell at them? Yeah. Didn't I stand up for you when you walked yes. out? Well, then listen to me. Will you listen to me? That meteor is five miles wide, and it's definitely going to hit us. It'll make a hole big enough to put the Atlantic in unless we can stop it. Shit. Five miles. Now, walk out. But what about General Adlon? Isn't he still in charge of Hercules? Adlon's a good man, technically. But he's two-dimensional. You know that. We've got to find a way to move him out. That's problem number one. Problem number two, there are about a hundred guys in this crazy town stupid enough to want to resist using Hercules because of what it would mean politically. What the hell am I supposed to do about that? Help me ride over them. Okay, you son of a bitch. I'll help you, but I want it straight up and down. Straight up and down, you've got my word. Those rockets have got to be realigned, and we've got exactly five days. <laughs> Не при каких обстоятельствах нельзя устанавливать контакт с Соединенными Штатами, пока возможны последствия не будут обсуждены с председателем. I hope no one has been foolish enough to make contact with the Russians about all this. It would be highly inadvisable if... No one would think of doing that without your approval, Mr. Secretary. But you can be sure they know all there is to know about that meteor by now. What they probably don't know is what we're planning to do. What we're discussing doing. Because I sincerely hope it's still discussion. General Adlon, I assure you that no decisions have been made. That's what this meeting's been called for, to decide what to do. Now, you're in charge of Project Hercules, and if the result of this meeting is to make use There's of that, nothing else we can use. The only thing we've got out there is Hercules. Damn it. Hercules is not up there either, as far as anybody but we are concerned. And it's got to stay that way. We have never admitted to Hercules. And if we admit to it we now... We have to. You can't keep the whole world in the dark about what's going on. Once they know that a five-mile hunk of rock is going to hit somewhere at 30,000 miles per hour, the people will want to know what the hell we intend to do about You're it. You're going to tell the entire world we have nuclear rockets orbiting out there in direct contradiction to every international agreement we've ever made? That's an invitation to, to being called liars and warmongers well, international every single murderers nation if we in don't. What do you want to do? You want to go out there and meet it with BB guns and slingshots? Please, gentlemen. Dr. Bradley, would you please tell us what would happen if this media struck us? A massive rock, one mile wide, traveling at uh, 30,000 miles per hour, would cause a crater 50 miles across and five miles deep. Orpheus is five miles wide. Its striking force is equal to 2,500,000 megatons of TNT. That is 10 orders of magnitude above the largest earthquake ever recorded. It would throw into the atmosphere 
five billion tons of Earth and reduce solar radiation for decades to come, it could cause another ice age. What if the thing doesn't hit? There's some chance of that, isn't there? Every scientific facility we have... You have been wrong before. You were dead wrong when you sent Challenger 2 off its course. Oh, God damn it, I don't have to listen to this. Gentlemen, speak! Gentlemen, you're out of order! Hey, gentlemen! Dr. Brett, where are you going? I need air. I don't give a damn what Russia says about America, or vice versa. I told you what's going to happen when that meteor hits. But if you think you can prevent it by burying your heads under a blanket of shit, fine. If you ever reach a decision, I'll be in the bar across the street. I'll get back to you. I'll have to discuss this at the White House. In time. Because there's damn little time. We are now going to replay a recording of a broadcast made by them earlier today. The British cabinet met this morning to discuss the announcement by George Royal Bank Observatory that a piece of an asteroid knocked out of orbit by a comet is on possible collision course with Earth. It would seem that within less than a week this giant object could strike our planet, causing untold damage and great loss of life. It is understood that the Prime Minister is in close consultation with the American President hey, Charlie, and has volunteered the every assistance on. the British government can give. We consider it deplorable that the American people should be dependent on the BBC to supply us with facts that we have a right to know. I Big consider brother. it deplorable. Well, I don't have I a drink. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Scotch. A large one. A large one. What happened? They're calling the president. What if he says no? A couple of years ago, my son Andy started to complain about pains in his stomach. All the junk food kids eat today, I wasn't a bit surprised. But he kept on complaining. So I had a talk with Miriam, and we decided to take him to a doctor. Just for an opinion, you understand. Appendicitis, the doctor said. Miriam said, let's wait till tomorrow. The pain will go away. You know my Miriam. She can't stand the thought of an operation. That night when she went to bed, she cried herself to sleep. I went to the boys' room, picked him up, and took him to a hospital. Six hours later, his appendix was out. He was feeling better having an ice cream, and Miriam... Miriam was all smiles. You get my point? But how do you sneak me into a position where I can fire off a dozen nuclear warheads without Miriam knowing? I'll do it. I can't do it any other way. Is there Mr. Sherwood here? Yeah, that's me. Telephone. You can take it uh, right through there. Thanks. No, Mr. Secretary, I'd rather not call back. I'd appreciate it if you held on. Yes, Dr. Bradley's checking out the information to verify. Yes, sir, I do think it's urgent. No, sir. Paul. In a minute. It's coming up now, sir. Well, what do I tell him? How good is his health? Confirmed. Confirmed. Hercules is light. Mr. Secretary, it's been confirmed. So, what you're telling me is that even if we admit to Hercules, and I give you my permission to realign the rockets, we still need more firepower, more nuclear megatonnage, more rockets? That's right, Mr. President. Well, Mr. Secretary, do we have more rockets? Not in space, sir. Then what the hell are we supposed to do? Conjure them out of air? Mr. President, Will you confirm what I'm about to say? 
The Russians have their own equivalent of Hercules out in space. True or not true? True. Mr. President, we need the combined power of theirs and ours. They'll never admit they've got the thing. We'll make them admit it. How? General Adlon, for the time being, until this crisis is resolved, I'm putting Dr. Bradley in charge of Operation Hercules. I rely on you to give him every aid and assistance. Mr. President, I hope I'm public spirited enough to I'm do sure what I'm sure you are. Now listen, I think I have a solution to this problem. Where will you be later this evening? We're flying to New York immediately. Make sure you hear my broadcast at 8 o'clock. That's all, gentlemen. Thank you. You're going to ask what steps have been taken to make sure that this meteor never comes anywhere near the Earth's surface. And I'm happy to tell you that realizing that such an emergency as this could arise, your government, in collaboration with the best scientific brains at its disposal, developed the project to deal with this emergency. And that project has been named Hercules. What is Hercules? This is an armed orbiting satellite. It's nuclear weaponry aimed toward outer space. Right name, wrong direction. What can Hercules do? It can send at the press of a button enough power to destroy any foreign body on a collision course with our planet. But in this case, a special circumstance has arisen. The meteor is of such size and velocity that even this powerful weapon cannot do the job entirely. But fortunately, the Russians, with the same foresight that we ourselves possessed, also mounted their own defense weapon. We do not know what the Russians have called their weapon, but we know it exists. And we are going to ask them to combine their nuclear power with ours, so that together we will be able to deal with the meteor, to strike it with irresistible force, and to end forever its potential danger to us all. I will myself be speaking with the Russians immediately after I finish this broadcast. The game is on. Good night. And God bless you. Американцы выбрали себе президенты алхимиков. Он прекрасно умеет превращать лицемерие в дипломатию. Этот алхимик будет нам сейчас звонить. Я полагаю, что нужно дать ему возможность начать переговоры, в которых вы, товарищ Дубов, будете принимать самое близкое участие. Но нужно помнить, что это будут только обсуждения. Волга, вот-вот, выйдет из берегов. Мы все обсуждаем способы плавания. Алло? This is Dr. Bradley. Do you have a pass for him? Morning, sir. Morning. General Adlon come in yet? Half an hour ago. How far down? Right next to an old subway station. A section that runs under the Hudson. It made it easy for us to bring all the equipment in. Nobody saw us, and it saved millions. 
why not some sensible place like Houston? This is easy access to a total telecommunication setup right above our heads. And nobody in their right minds would think of putting their most important emergency striking power under the busiest city in the world. your pass, sir? Would you mind signing it, sir? Thank you. Command to internal. Agena, I'm Bill and Bill and of Central Control. Call 8124. Head back to the bus chief. We're about 45 seconds. Arm, we're going to be in Exercise number 41. General Adlon, most impressive. Thank you. I have a message for you. Normally we work for 25, but since it's been called an emergency, I brought on the full crew. Oh, good news. The Russians are coming. I would like to go on record that I consider allowing the Russians to come into this center to be a grave error, which one day the United States may bitterly regret. I'd like to meet some of the staff. Of course. General. May I use your office for a moment? Certainly. This way. This is our chief technician, Rolf Mannheim. Dr. Oh, Bradley, you have been teaching a nephew of mine at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Ben Mannheim? Yes. Well, he's a bright boy. Oh, you. Teaching me in a couple of years. <laughs> All stations give status now. This is our trajectory analysis officer, John Watkins. Hello. Hello. I suppose you're tied into 1180. No, a 360 with a custom-designed memory. Like I said, I'll be asking you and your computer a lot of questions. We're going to give you a lot of prompt answers. Triple check. My assistant, Alan Marshall. Dr. Bradley? Sorry to interrupt, but I've got Sir Michael Hughes from the Jodrell Bank Observatory on the monitor. He would like a word with you. Excuse me. I'm Bill Hunter, in charge of tracking. All right. What else do you link with besides England? Hong Kong, Arecibo, and New South Wales. Good morning, Michael. Good evening, Paul. I didn't expect to see you until Wimbledon. Assuming, of course, there'll be a Wimbledon. What have you got for us? We can expect the first splinters in 24 hours. Doubtful if we can track them unless they're in clusters, but we'll do our best. Anything else? Nothing at the moment, no. I just wanted to make contact with you. We'll keep in constant touch. Until then. Paul. Russian astrophysicist that you asked for? Dr. Dubov. He's arriving at 7.30 this evening, Washington. Dr. Dubov, are we glad to see you here? Dr. Dubov, are we very glad to see you here? Спасибо. Thank you. Your orientation. Uh, uh, this is an exact uh, uh, reflection of the satellite alignment. and its alignment. Or is the direction, or is the direction of the rocket just, just an accident? I'm not prepared to volunteer such strategic information. On, on... Он не готов сам выдать всякую стратегическую информацию. Is that what I said? Yes, sir. Какую несет ударную силу? Please. Thank you. What striking power does it carry? I'd prefer you got that information from Dr. Bradley. Он хочет, чтобы Dr. Bradley ответил. Good morning. 14 rockets, 
Each carrying a 100 megaton bomb. Welcome to New York, Dr. Dubov. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Must we have everything in duplicate? It's a recognized procedure. How else do we know we're being interpreted properly? I think we could all start by uh, trusting each other. Otherwise, what's the point? And if it's a matter of choosing, I'll take the pretty one. <laughs> well, the pretty one is uh, Tatiana Nikolaevna Donskaya. Did I say it right? Very good. Astrophysicist and Dr. Dubov's English voice. How do you do? How do you do? And the captain there, he's General Adlan's Russian voice. Sir? Aye. And since it appears we're redundant here, if you'll excuse us. Mr. Sherwood, I'd like to see you outside. I'll see if I can't calm him down. He thinks General Adlon is not pleased to see him. General, I know this is difficult for you, but I would have... Mr. Sherwood, 15 minutes ago, I spoke to the Secretary of Defense, who seems more aware of the complexity of the situation than you do. But the Secretary... His orders are, and I quote, there will be no change in the direction of our rockets until the Russians admit they've got their own rockets and until they also agree to realign them. Is that understood? Look, why don't you Xerox 100 copies of that report? Pass them out among a hundred guys in Washington, and then organize a hundred meetings to discuss it. And by that time, the meteor will have hit, and we won't have any more problems. Я не собираюсь критиковать, но вам не легко будет поразить метеор по яколовками, направленными на СССР. He doesn't mean to criticize, but you will not find it easy to hit a meteor with your warheads pointing towards the USSR. We call ours Hercules. What do you call yours? Они называют свой спутник Геркулесом. А как называется ваш? Как можно называть то, чего нет? How can one give a name to that which does not exist? Then who the hell put up this thing called Peter the Great? It's warheads pointing at the United States. Тогда кто же назвал его Петром Великим? Его боеголовки нацелены на Америку. Chinese, perhaps. Dr. Dubov, we've got a slight problem. If Peter the Great does not exist, we are out of business. But if it does exist, I'd have to know what weapons it would be carrying, where it was, and what frequencies we would have to use to align it with Hercules. И на каких частотах они могли бы координировать его с Геркулесом? Now, for purposes of discussion only. Только для обсуждения. А, я понимаю важность ваших вопросов. He understands the importance of your questions. Если бы я участвовал в создании такого незаконного оружия. If he had been involved in the construction of such an illegal weapon. Разумеется, я мог бы на них теоретически ответить. He could then, of course, uh, theoretically, answer those questions. Then, would you be prepared, theoretically, of course, to work out the details with me as to how we link the satellites? Theoretically. Yes, he would be ready. Before we do that, what would you have designed your striking power to be? Какую бы вы запроектировали ударную силу? 16 ракет. По столько же мегатон на каждый, как и у вас. 16 ракет, each carrying megatonnage, the same as your own. That gives a billion plus. Это дало бы им еще миллиард. Theoretically. Theoretically.
Сюда! Аня, бери сюда! I give the floor to the first speaker on my list, the representative of Canada. We have information that a disturbance of earthquake proportions has occurred somewhere in Siberia. I believe that all of us here are aware of that fact. But would the Russian delegate kindly tell us what was the cause of the disturbance? Mr. President, we would like to request a recess while we consult further with our gun. At my next mark, it will be 2300, and we are in routine telemetry test number 36. Good morning. Did you get any sleep last night? A couple of hours. How about you? I played gin rummy and lost. What's the Russian girl like? Very nice, very bright, and forget it. I missed you. We are approaching X plus six minutes on the attitude control test AC-21, and all station monitors are green. With compliments. I had them strip the army blanket off your bed and put on some proper sheets. That's steady kind. I've also got some decent soap for you, because using the stuff they give you here is like washing your hands with a rock. Thank you. It's a very pretty scarf. Thank you. Will Jim Jackson please report to Central Security Office? You're talking so hot to spot. His hours are all confused. How about you? Oh, I'm all right. That system analysis team will review attitude control, power problems, and 0800 tomorrow in conference room. Shall I wake him? No, let him sleep. Have some coffee. Stored commands for attitude control update are programmed in Hercules. Oh, it's, uh, has a little bearing. How long have you been with him? I've known him for ten years, but I've only worked with him for five. Why did you choose astrophysics? He chose me. How? I was a telephone operator at a center for control of flight in the Cosmodrome by Kanur in Middle Asia. I knew your language because when I was a child, my mother kept giving me books in English and telling me that one day I would be grateful to her. I suppose I am. Would you like one of these? No, thanks. Go on. Then about ten years ago, some British scientists came to Russia to meet with some of our people. Alexei Alexeyevich, our sleeping beauty, needed someone to translate for him. And they asked me. His English voice? When I had finished, he asked me to stay on with him as interpreter and uh, third assistant. He was married to Olga Alexeyevna then, his first wife. How many she had? He's on his fourth. He's sleeping alone now, but it's not very often. You know, it's very nice talking with you. Thank you. But we've been talking for almost two days. No, I've been talking with you, Dubov. I mean talking with you, you. Very attractive. Thank you again. Then? Then? Astrophysics. Oh. Well, I realized that space fascinated me. Alexei Alexeyevich saw this, and he encouraged me. He arranged for me to go to university. 
And when I returned, I was an astrophysicist. That's when I met my husband. Your husband? He was a cosmonaut. We were together for three years. And then he went on an exploratory mission, and he didn't come back. And now, is there anyone? Nothing serious. Not really. Dr. Bradley, Sir Michael is reporting on the Jardro Bank Monitor. There are meteors coming in over Central Europe. Ah, Paul, the observatory in Frascati is reporting. There's a cluster big enough to track coming in over Italy, south of Pisa. Speed of approach, 15,000 meters per second. Frascati says that not one of them got through. The whole thing's been nothing more than a gigantic fireworks display. Thank you, Michael. That's the best news we've had yet. We'll try and keep it that way. By James, it's Bradley! Right. I think we can assume the emergency's over. This particular one and the emergency in general. It's a pity the world's been sent into a state of unnecessary panic. But that's your threat, Dr. Bradley. A fireworks display. Tell this asshole once and for all. Orpheus will not burn up. It's too damn big. We've got enough to deal with here, General. We don't need any additional aggravation from you. Not one promise of calamity has come true. And as far as I'm concerned, not a single one will. When common sense is restored, and the president has returned the control of this center to me. I shall return to this center. Do каких же пор всё это будет так продолжаться? Да что же это такое, чёрт возьми? Я подвожу им посольство и скажу пару чёрных слов. Идёте, дурни без дурня. He wishes to telephone the Russian embassy in Washington. The USSR is not unaware of the seriousness of this situation. We have therefore decided to add to the power of Hercules the considerable power that we ourselves possess. A satellite developed before the United States developed theirs, but which we designed and constructed for the purpose of defense against possible disasters such as the one confronting us now. For that purpose only, the USSR will always support any exercise, the primary object of which is to the benefit of mankind. Russian scissors for the cutting of the red tape. The Petra Peter the Great. Ja, ja, ich muss gesagt, warum es war Panglisky. Ja, ich muss lesen, a taxista. Dr. Dubov would like to tell you a few words he heard from a taxi driver when he was last in America. 
Power tolerance is Book the Dodgers! Thank you.